Hello friends, welcome to video series on geography. In my previous video I've explained about ocean relief features. In this video I'll be explaining about temperature distribution of oceans and we'll do a quick recap of the concept of ocean currents. So what is the importance of understanding the temperature distribution of oceans? We know that the climatology of the entire earth is greatly influenced by the ocean waters and especially the climatology of the coastal regions. Along with that, we have important climatic events like El Nino. El Nino is nothing but sea surface temperature anomaly, which simply means that unusual temperature distribution over the Pacific Ocean in a particular year. This particular unusual temperature distribution leads to various climatic changes across the world. For example, we have drought conditions in the Indian subcontinent region and we have increased cyclonic activity in the Eastern Pacific region. So all these are manifestations of the El Nino event. Along with that we have ocean currents which are directly influenced by the temperature distribution based on sun's insulation. For example, we have vertical ocean currents which are greatly influenced by the temperature changes. We know that vertical ocean currents are mainly caused due to differences in densities and density differences are a direct consequence of both temperature as well as salinity differences. We know that a parcel of water which is warm is less denser when it becomes cold it becomes more denser so when water at the upper layers are cooled in such a case they'll become denser and then they sink towards the bottom giving rise to a convectional cell where bottom layers move towards top so this particular convectional currents are called as vertical ocean currents along with that we have salinity where when the temperature is high, the water is evaporated, making the water more saline. So the top, the top layers which are exposed to the sun's insulation become saline and they become denser and sink, sink to the bottom. And this is also a conventional uh, current. So all these are vertical ocean currents which are caused mainly due to temperature differences. So to understand the important climatic features like El Nino and also the formation of various vertical ocean currents, it is important for us to understand the temperature distribution of oceans. Along with that we have horizontal ocean currents, but the horizontal ocean currents are mainly influenced by wind movement. So winds play a very important role when it comes to the motion of horizontal ocean currents. But we have ocean currents especially where there is exchange of water between the poles and the equator. From the equator the water flows in the form of surface ocean currents. Here we have warm less denser surface ocean water. This gets cooler near the uh, polar regions and it sinks. And here the water flows as subsurface cold, uh, cold ocean currents almost at the bottom layers and moves towards the equator and is upheld at the equator. So we can see this is a huge convectional is, a, is an example for a huge convectional cell. So even horizontal ocean currents are greatly influenced by the temperature differences where the sinking at the poles and upwelling at the equator takes place mainly because of temperature differences. And also we have distribution of marine organisms which is greatly influenced by the temperature distribution of oceans. So the best example would be the distribution of coral reefs. We know that coral reefs are highly sensitive to temperature changes and they can survive only in regions which have uh, warm waters. For example, we have tropics where there is abundant warm waters. So coral reefs mo mostly thrive in the tropical regions and they are mo uh, almost absent in the temperate regions. Also we have certain regions like where the cold ocean currents have a great influence. For example, in the eastern South American region we have this Umbolt or Peruvian current which is cold and this cold current doesn't facilitate the growth of corals. So here the coral reefs are absent. and in the eastern African region we have Bengula current, here also the coral reefs are absent. And here we have western Australian current which is a cold current. And then we have here Canaries. And we have Californian current here. So all these currents inhibit the growth of corals. As a result even in the tropical regions where these cold currents are received there is no coral development. So here we can see how the temperature distribution of oceans can affect the biology or uh, marine organic uh, conditions of a region. And also coming to the uh, climate of coastal lands, so the most determining factor is the marinic influence or the oceanic influence. The best example would be the climate of British region. So in the previous uh, videos on climatic regions, I've explained about various climatic regions. There we have studied about oceanic influence on various climatic regions. So if you take the climate of UK, it is very moderate compared to the 
other regions which are on the same latitude for example we have canada parts of russia and all these regions which are on the same latitude but still uh, the other regions are very cold or have extremes of temperature whereas the uk region has very moderate climatic conditions and again this is because of the oceanic influence and here again there is a warm current called as north north atlantic drift so usually here it is called as gulf stream once it reaches at the great banks region from there it is called as north atlantic drift so this north atlantic drift is a warm current may it simply means that it is warmer than the corresponding latitudes as a result the uk region has comparatively moderate tem uh, climatic conditions compared to the other regions on the same latitude so here again the temperature distribution plays a very important role in determining the climatic conditions so where does all this heat energy come from so obvious source would be sun's insulation other than this there are other sources like the heat generated by the earth's interior we know that oceanic crust is very thin compared to the continental crust so continental crust is about 70 to uh, 50 km thick whereas the oceanic crust is about only 30 km thick so this crustal region is i mean only 5 to 30 km thick so because of this it is very close in contact with the mantle region we know that mantle region has various uh, hot magma as a result this amount of heat is leaked towards the crust of the oceanic crust and hence there is certain amount of heat that is supplied at the bottom region so this particular heat is another source of heat in the ocean waters but when it when it com when we compare it to the sun's insulation this heat produced by the earth's interior is of not so is not so significant other than this there is heat produced by the friction between various water layers and friction between water and the winds so again this heat is quite insignificant compared to the sun's insulation so why does deep water marine organisms survive in spite of absence of sunlight so we have seen that at the depth there is heat coming from the earth's interior so this heat is utilized by certain bacteria which are primary producers and feeding on this bacteria there are many other secondary producers so all the secondary producers get their food because of the primary producers which solely depend on the heat generated by the earth's interior so the top layers is called as photic zone where there is abundant sunlight here we have lot of uh, activity happening especially in the form of primary production that is the formation of various algae etc algae and cyanobacteria and various other factor various other organisms so these things form primary productivity and lot of other fishes feed on this animals or uh, small microscopic phytoplankton and give rise to secondary productivity so we have earth's interior which is a aphotic zone aphotic zone is nothing but it doesn't receive any good amount of sunlight especially below 200 to 300 meters so here most of the organisms survive either by obtaining food from the upper layers or because of the heat generated from the interior so why why is diurnal range of ocean temperature too small and why ocean take oceans take more time to heat or cool so i have discussed about this in the previous videos we know that water has high specific heat compared to land or uh, any other uh, solid mass it simply means that water takes more time to get either cool or hot uh, when a certain amount of heat is supplied as a result the water doesn't gain heat quickly or lose heat quickly as a result the diurnal range uh, will be very small and there is greater amount of mixing in water we know that there are various vertical currents as well as horizontal currents and this leads to transfer of heat from one region to other region as a result both the diurnal range being very short as well as it takes long time to cool as well as hot become hot so how are ocean water cooled the first thing is back radiations it is nothing but the amount of energy that is reflected back by the ocean water this is called as uh, this is discussed on the under the concept of heat budget where we have discussed how various parts of the earth absorb uh, light during daytime and reflect back this light in the form of terrestrial radi radiation during night so this is nothing but heat budget and there is exchange of heat between atmosphere and ocean waters and then we have evaporation which is very important when it comes to loss of heat so we know that in the previous videos on uh, cyclones and the formation of thunderstorms etc i've explained about the importance of evaporation and water vapor in all those physical phenomena so evaporation is nothing but change of liquid state to gaseous state and here we have a graph where we have 
energy supply on the x-axis and temperature change in the y-axis. So here we can see at a certain stage when we are supplying energy, there is no change in state, but there is increase in temperature of the mass or the liquid substance. Uh, this is nothing but the heat that is absorbed during phase change and this heat that is absorbed is called as latent heat. So this latent heat is very important when it comes to various climatological phenomena. When a liquid turns into gas, the amount of heat is absorbed. As a result, the oceans uh, lose heat because of evaporation. Whereas when gases turn into liquid, this is nothing but condensation. We have uh, water droplets turning into rain. So here the heat is released. It is called as latent heat of condensation. So here we have latent heat of evaporation where liquid turns into gas and we have latent heat of condensation when gas turns into liquid. So in the oceans, we, are, we, we, we see the liquids getting converted into gas. So here there is absorption of heat in the form of latent heat of evaporation or vaporization. So what are the factors that affect temperature distribution of oceans? The first one is insulation without sun's insulation plays a very important role. And then heat loss, we have seen how heat can be lost. And then we have albedo. Albedo is also a form of heat loss, but albedo is quite different from other kind of heat losses because in albedo, a ray of light which comes and hits the surface is directly reflected back. So here there is no absorption. So it is the proportion of energy which is reflected instead of absorbing. So albedo of water is very high, but it is not as high as ice or various other solid masses, but still it is significant. So again, the physical characteristic of the sea surface, we know that sea surfaces are of various shapes and the, those shapes play a very important role in determining the uh, temperature distribution by affecting the movement of ocean waters. So what are the factors that affect, again, the temperature distribution of oceans? Till now we have talked about insulation and all. There are other minor factors like salinity. Salinity is very important because if the salinity is high, the boiling point of water is increased. When the boiling point is increased, the evaporation potential is decreased. As a result, even salinity plays a very important role in determining the temperature distribution. And the presence of submarine ridges and sills. We know that oceans are not flat surfaces and there are various oceanic features. And sills are the ones which are at mainly at the openings of oceans. For example, we have Strait of Gibraltar, which is like an entry point to the Mediterranean Sea. And then we have uh, the entry point here near at the border of Red Sea and uh, Indian Ocean. So all these have sills. Sills are nothing but an oceanic feature which stands like a high wall at the surface of the ocean bottom. For example, let us say this is the surface of the uh, ocean, ocean surf surface. And here we have ocean bottom. Now this is the sill which divides the lower layers of water from each other. There are this kind, these kind of sills exist in both Mediterranean as well as the uh, Red Sea region where we have uh, a very long high sills which prevent the movement of water between various bottom layers. And this kind of movement creates a very high changes in temperatures. For example, we have Red Sea which is very hot at the bottom. Here the temperatures are about 20 degrees Celsius whereas in the Indian Ocean on the other side of the sill as very low temperatures. So these differences or great variations in ocean water temperatures is because of the presence of these kind of uh, physical barriers like sills and submarine ridges. So all these factors play a very important role in distribution of temperature. And obviously the shape, shape of the ocean will be a very important factor. For example, we have Mediterranean uh, Sea which is an enclosed sea. So it has very few outlets and very narrow ones. For example, we have Suez Canal and uh, Strait of Gibraltar which are two entry and exit, exit points but they are very narrow compared to the ocean and it is longitudinally sorry latitudinally very extensive as a result it receives good amount of sunlight throughout the year I mean being very close to the equator and here because of the sill and various other factors the mixing of water is very low when the mixing is low the temperature remains there for a very long time now compare this with other region of Gulf of California which is vertically distributed uh, we know that when the temperature, there, when there is no temperature dif uh, dis uh, differences, then the water movement is low. For example, we have Mediterranean Sea, which is longitudinally extensive. It simply means that the temperature received at point A would be almost equal to the temperature received at point B. So when the temperature difference is low, then there is no movement of water from point A to point B or point to B to point A. As a result, the water is stagnant in the Mediterranean Sea and hence it is very warm compared to the other uh, enclosed seas. Now coming to the Gulf of California, it has a longitudinal extension and we know that the temperature received at point A would be much 
lesser than the uh, uh, temperature received at point B because of the latitudinal extent. So we know that this is at a higher latitude, this is at a lower latitude, and hence there will be temperature difference. So we can see when there is temperature difference, there will be movement of what in the form in the form of vertical currents. So this particular movement, vertical as well as horizontal current, this particular movement leads to exchange of water between various uh, regions of the sea, giving rise to a less uniform temperature distribution. So we can see here the Red Sea, a Mediterranean Sea, which has high temperatures and the temperature distribution is almost uniform. Whereas we have the Gulf of Mexico, where the temperature distribution is less uniform because of its longitudinal extent and shape. Other factors are again the shape of the sea. For example, we have enclosed seas like we have seen the Mediterranean Sea, etc. So if you look at this figure, we have Mediterranean Sea, Black Sea, etc. All these are enclosed seas. The Mediterranean Sea doesn't receive any good amount of fresh water. As a result, its temperature is very high. Whereas we have other uh, sea like Black Sea, which receives good amount of fresh water. As a result, its temperature is comparatively lower than the Mediterranean Sea. So again cyclones play a very important role. We know that cyclone is nothing but large scale evaporation followed by condensation. As a result there is a lot of heat absorption from the oceans. And we have unequal distribution of land compared in both northern and southern hemispheres. So we, we have great amount of land mass in the northern hemisphere. As a result oceans tend to be more hot because they are in contact with the continents which are oh, which have very low specific heat. And again we have the southern hemisphere where there is where water dominates as a result here the temperature of water is more uniform and is, it is less extreme compared to the northern hemisphere. And then we have conditions like El Nino which are mainly because of prevailing winds, changes in the prevailing winds and these kind of events can also lead to, I mean determine the temperature distribution of various parts of the ocean. And most important ones are the ocean currents, ocean currents lead to the heat exchange between various latitudes. So again ocean currents play a very important role in determining the temperature distribution of oceans. Now like we have horizontal distribution, we also have vertical distribution of temperature. And we have seen our talked about the photic zone or rephotic zone which is which exists up to 200 meters below the surface of the oceans. I mean and again we have a photic zone which exists below the 2000 meters till the ocean depths. So this particular region we can see receives good amount of sunlight whereas the other region has no sunlight. So as this region receives sunlight the temperature of the photic zone is usually high. Uh, below the photic zone we can see how the temperature falls drastically. So this is the temperature profile of oceans we can see the temperature falling quite significantly. Uh, below the line called as thermocline. Thermocline is nothing but the boundary region between the photic zone and a photic zone where there is huge temperature contrast. For example, th this region is having higher temperature changes but uh, the temperature is also high. In the other place we have uh, the temperature changes being least. So this region has very least temperature change but its temperature is more, I mean very less. So thermocline divides these two contrasting regions. So the top region has greater change and more temperature. The bottom region has less temperature and less changes. So this is how vertical distribution is uh, observed. Coming to the horizontal distribution, we have uh, different type kinds of horizontal distributions. For example, at the equator, the temperature is uniform at 27 degrees Celsius to 25 degrees Celsius. You know that equator receives highest amount of insulation. And we have at 25 to 20 degrees latitudes, the temperature uh, falls drastically and it can go up to, it can be much lesser, somewhere around 20 degrees Celsius near the Tropic of Cancer and Capricorn. And this, this changes in both northern and southern hemispheres. This is because of land water contrast. And at the 40 degrees latitude, we have about 14 degrees Celsius. And at the equator, it is almost 0 degrees Celsius. And coming to the vertical distribution, I mean vertical three layer system, we, we have three important layers. The first one is called as, I mean the first one is 500 meters thick where the temperature is can be quite significant. And then we have thermocline where the temperature fall is very high. Uh, here it is the contrast, I mean the region that separates the high temperature region and the low temperature region. And then we have cold layer which is below the thermocline. Coming to the general behavior, so we have frigid zone which is nothing but the region above the temperate region 
which has temperatures close to 0 degrees Celsius and here uh, the ocean surface is frozen as a result it has a lot of ice on it. Ice being a bad conductor of it doesn't allow the low layers to cool as a result the low layers constantly remains at 0 degrees Celsius. And then we have the rate of decrease at equator where the temperature uh, rate of decrease in temperature with height is quite I mean increase in temperature with height is quite significant. In the equatorial regions with significant amount of rainfall we have the salinity uh, which is low because of the fresh water inflow and then we have enclosed seas which are both in lower as well as higher latitudes which record higher temperatures at the bottom so remember the temperatures at the top depends on the climatic condition for example we have enclosed seas in the higher latitudes where they are extremely cold whereas we have enclosed seas in the lower uh, latitudes which are extremely hot but when we, when we take the temperature of the bottom surfaces they are always I mean they record comparatively higher temperatures at the bottom irrespective of whether they are in the low latitudes or higher latitudes. And then we have important enclosed seas like Saragasso Sea, Red Sea and Mediterranean Sea which have high bottom temperatures. So we know that Saragasso Sea is a sea which is formed due to ocean currents and it do doesn't border any land. So here we can see in the figure it is formed by uh, the gyre. Gyre is nothing but the oceanic circulation formed due to various uh, currents. For example we have here Gulf Stream, North Atlantic Drift. Canaries current and North Equatorial current. So all these currents form a gyre where the water keeps on rotating or circulating in this particular region and this led to a sea called as Sargasso Sea. So the water exchange between the Sargasso Sea and the neighboring oceanic region is very low. As a result the water at the bottom here has higher temperatures compared to the neighboring regions. And this is true with other enclosed seas like Red Sea as, as well as Mediterranean seas. Now let us look at uh, quickly about ocean currents. So uh, in my previous videos at under climatology I have given complete detail uh, explanation of ocean currents but now I will just give a quick introduction or uh, just quick recap of this concept as it is important for the next videos. So in the Pacific Ocean we have North Equatorial Current which flows towards West. This is because of the trade winds which drag this water towards the West and then we have warm ocean current which is called as Kurishino current which flows towards the northeastern part of uh, Japan. Here it mixes with Okhotsk cold current as well as Kamachatka or Oeshio cold current. So here this cold current moves towards east as north pacific current and there it gets branched in, uh, divided into Alaska and Californian current. So here we can see Alaska current is a warm current because it is comparatively at higher temperatures compared to the uh, latitudinal region and then we have Californian current. So till now we have talked how ocean currents influence the formation of uh, the climatology of various regions. For example, we have uh, the desert region, especially the like Mexican desert, Sonoran desert, etc. So all these deserts are formed because of this cold, I mean are uh, greatly influenced by this cold current called as Californian current. And then we have South Equatorial current in the Southern Hemisphere. And then uh, equatorial counter equatorial current is formed because of the calm region called as doldrums. We know that doldrums is a region where there is convergence of uh, winds flowing from the northern and southern hemisphere in the form of easterly trade winds. So this counter equatorial current flows in the reverse direction along the doldrums. And then we have uh, the south equatorial branch which gets divided into east Australian current which is warm current. There it mixes with west wind drift and then becomes a Peruvian current. Peruvian current we know that it is also called as Humboldt current and it is a cold current as a result it has a desiccating effect and creates uh, one of the driest places on earth called as Atacama desert somewhere here within central Chile I guess. And we have currents of the Atlantic Ocean just like in the Pacific Ocean here yeah, there is similar behavior. The important ones are the Gulf Stream and the North Atlantic Drift. So the Gulf Stream here mixes with Labrador and East Greenland current which are cold currents so the mixing of uh, hot and cold currents gives rise to a very rich fishing ground near the Grand Banks region and then we have North Atlantic Drift which flows towards uh, the UK region and then we have Norwegian current which is uh, the further extension of North Atlantic Drift. So the Norwegian current is very helpful in keeping the Barents Sea uh, partly frozen or uh, less frozen during the entire year. So this sea is called as Barents Sea which is of great importance for Russia. So here we have a lot of uh, oil resources which is Russia. Russia is trying to explore these resources and this Norwegian current facilitate all these kind of economic activity. And then we have North Atlantic Drift which is, which is warm current influencing the climate of 
UK and the neighboring regions and then we have Canary's current which is mainly important because it keeps this region dry so in the southern hemisphere as well we have various currents so here we have Brazilian current which gets mixed with Falkland current which is a counter current so this mix mixed current flows as west wind drift and then we have Bengula current here so the Bengula current is the primary reason behind the formation of Namib and other Kalahari desert so we have uh, offshore winds as well as uh, this cold desiccating effect of the Bengula current as a result we have one of the very dry places on earth in the form of Namib and Kalahari deserts so in the Indian Ocean uh, the northern Indian Ocean ocean currents are greatly influenced by the monsoon winds for example in winter we have northeast monsoon winds in such a case we have counterclockwise direction of currents so the southern uh, the southern Indian Ocean behaves just like the Atlantic Ocean there is no huge difference but when we come to summer we don't have north equatorial current and counter equatorial current instead we have one single current in the form of the uh, clockwise currents in both Bay of Bengal as, a, as well as Arabian Sea and the southern ocean has more or less the same behavior and we have West Australian current which helps keep this particular region a desert region so till now we have talked about vertical and horizontal temperature distribution now we'll see about the range of ocean temperatures so on the land we ha usually have highest temperatures occurring uh, during um, afternoon especially around 12 to 1 o'clock whereas in the oceans the highest temperatures occur at 2 p.m. this is because of the greater specific heat of water and the lowest temperatures occur at 5 a.m. and this is quite in contrast where on uh, continents usually it occurs at 2 or 3 a.m. and then we have av average diurnal range diurnal range is nothing but the temperature range within a day so this is just is barely one degree this is as low as one degree this is because of uh, the ocean water which is constantly mixed as a result the temperature changes doesn't take place quickly along with that we know that the ocean water has high greater sp uh, specific heat as a result uh, this particular thing like the annual uh, uh, temperature range I mean both annual as well as diurnal temperature range are comparatively very low compared to the oceans and the maximum temperatures occurs in the August and this is the reason why ty typhoon activity is quite intense in the Pacific Ocean region so uh, the typhoon activity is very intense when the temperature is high and the maximum oceanic temperature occurs in August and not in uh, June as in the continents and then we have minimum temperatures that occur in the February region and the range of temperature is also influenced by the sunspot sunspot is nothing but a region which has comparatively lower temperature compared to the other regions of the sun and this sunspot causes 11 year cycle where there is extremes of temperature conditions which influence ocean currents as well so sunspot is a feature of photosphere of the sun we know that there are various layers of the sun like the earth we have core where there is hot uh, burning uh, substance which is at very high temperatures so the temperature here is about few million degrees Celsius after that we have various other uh, layers like chromosphere etc radiation zone chromosphere and photosphere so photosphere is the one that radiates all the energy that we see and here the temperature is quite low compared to the core it is only about 6000 degrees Celsius so sunspot is a region which whose temperature is comparatively lower it is about two to three thousand degrees Celsius so because of con this contrast in temperature this particular region occurs as a appears as a dark dark spot because of the brighter neighboring zones and this particular zone is called as sunspot and sunspots are caused due to the magnetic field which inhibits convection so convection is nothing but the transfer of heat energy from core towards the surface in the form of convectional currents and this magnetic region prevents this uh, convectional currents as a result uh, because of lack of convection the temperature here falls significantly and this fall in temperature is uh, appears as sunspot and this sunspot cycle has a great influence on the climatology of the earth and especially the oceans so I'm not gone in detail about how this influences but I uh, just remember that even sunspot plays an important role in temperature distribution so this is all about what we talked about ocean currents as well as the temperature distribution if you like my video don't forget to subscribe I'll be posting more videos and thanks for watching